A proper Baijong stance has several elements to it. Let's start from the floor and work our way up the body. The first thing we want to do is start with our feet a little bit wider than our shoulders. Then we want to point our feet approximately 45 degrees off center. So I will start here. Now my feet are 45 degrees and you'll notice that my body is slightly turned or bladed. The big toe of my dominant side is on that line keeping that 45 degree angle of my actual foot. That line runs under my body and when it connects with my rear foot, it runs directly under the arch of my rear foot. Looks like this from the, from the side. So this is where we are so far. Now, you may feel comfortable with that line running under your heel, running under the arch of your foot, like this, or you may want to, you may feel a little bit more comfortable spreading your feet out a little bit wider, whereas the heel is on that line. So it looks like this when you bring up the other foot. You may feel comfortable standing like this. I stand, I feel comfortable standing like this, right? However, no one should stand like this with the foot of the rear, with the toe of the rear foot on that line. In JKD, we have this thing called spring-loaded, which means our heel is raised. The rear of the rear foot, the heel of the rear foot is raised. Now that takes care of your feet. Now, moving up the body, we want to slightly bend our knees, just kind of soften our stance a little bit to uh, aid in our agility. Have a little bit of bounce in our steps. So you don't want to lock your knees. You want to soften your knees a little bit or slightly bend your knees a little bit. Moving up a little bit higher, your hip actually should curve inward because your back has a, has a round C curvature to it. So it looks like this. My hips are forward and my back is round, so I'm sort of crouching down. Again, knees are soft, hips, my hip goes forward and my back rounds out. Like this. And now, continuing to move up the body, we have the positions of our hands. Your elbows are in guarding the ribs. Because I'm in a right lead, right foot is forward, which is my strong side, my dominant side. Because I am in a right lead, my right hand is in the lowest position in terms of my left hand. Both hands are on that center line. Now, this isn't a static position. This is not a static stance, but I'm giving you a frame of reference so that you'll know where to start and then from there you will grow and evolve. So my foot, my right foot is in place, my rear foot is in place, my knees are slightly bent, my hips are forward, my back is rounded out. Now I have my right hand pretty much on my hip, right on my waist in terms of level. It's not down here, it's here, right? My elbows are not flanked out to the sides. They're guarding my ribs. And then my other hand, my left hand, is just above my right hand. You will be constantly moving. So that lead hand, that top hand, will be going left, right, and center constantly. It's in constant motion. The same thing with your right hand. It's in constant motion. They may even change positions in terms of levels. But, you're, but, but, but the idea is that you're still guarding the center. You're still guarding the vitals. You're still guarding the face. And then continue to move up the body. My chin is down. My, ten, my chin is tucked just as a boxer would tuck his chin, but my eyes are up. 
So I'm not looking down at the floor, I'm looking up at my opponent while I'm slightly tucking my chin into my shoulders. From another angle. And from the other, other side. And back to center. Now, because the Bainjong stance is a comfortable stance, it should be a comfortable stance because you should not uh, have trouble getting into the Bainjong stance. You should simply flow right into it from a natural standing position. Now, of course, you may be off an inch here, an inch there, but that's besides the point. The idea is that you have the general framework and you have mobility, you have agility, you have balance with proper weight distribution. Once you become comfortable and fluid with the Baijong stance, you will be able to flow directly into it from, from, any, from any standing position that you may very well be in. You may stand here and trouble comes your way and you're able to simply slide into your Baijong stance in a nice, uh, unobtrusive a uh, non-telegraphic manner. This is how you want to do it. You want to be comfortable with it. So, you have to do it over and over and over again in order to become comfortable with it so that you do not telegraph your intentions. Okay, so as a recap, your feet are slightly wider than your shoulders. In terms of facing your opponent, your feet are 45 degrees off center. The big toe of your lead foot is at the edge of that center line. That center line runs under your body and goes under either the arch of your rear foot or behind the heel of your rear foot. That rear foot is also coiled or spring-loaded. Right? Knees are slightly bent, hips are forward, back is round with a C type of curvature to it. Your right hand or your dominant hand is parallel to your waist, parallel to your hip. Elbows are in. Your left hand is above your right hand. Both hands are actually on center line. And again, that elbow is in as well, just as the right so you aren't here. Both elbows are in, your chin is tucked, and your eyes are up. And lastly, you want to add what is called small phasic movements, meaning sharp, curt movements in and out to add a little bit of unpredictability to your position. And that is how you properly execute a Baijong stance.